Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today I'm going to be taking a look at an EVGA water cooler. They've been around for a little while but I fancied a bit of a play and after I'd done the uh, graphics card just recently and if you're interested in looking at the 1080 Ti SC2 review you can go to the channel or I will put a link and a card and all that sort of stuff. But I was quite impressed with that and I liked some of the features on it so when they said to me would you like to have a look at one of our AIOs? Seemed like an easy answer. So a quick look at the uh, rig. Now we didn't test it with this, but we did have a uh, 270 classified to hand and we'd only just finished, if you'd like to go and see it on the channel as well, the uh, uh, review of the 1080 Ti SC2. So it seemed kind of rude not to have chucked this in together. Although like I said, we are just using it for this part of the video and we did test it on our normal test rig hardware. So this is just kind of the showy offy sort of part. Anyways, from this angle, you do get a good view of the fans because normally your fans would go straight across here, but you can see that there is an arch. And if I was to stop it, you can see the blades quite easy, even more so from this angle when you think about it. Coming back down to the lower view, you can see the large EVGA logo on the front. I've got it cycling the colours at the moment, but you can use the software to go in there and manually set it if you want and link it up to the graphics card as well, should you want. Also in the software, what you can do is change the fan speed and the pump speed. Pump speed, for argument's sake, goes from like 1900 RPM up to over 3000 RPM and you can change that. Although to be honest with you with this, I was quite surprised that I couldn't hear the difference uh, in the performance levels with it, which I was quite impressed by, even though it is an Acetec unit because it's an Acetec OEM. But anyway, so you do get some nice braided hoses poking out the top. Now, uh, I did initially think that they might have been a bit too long, but once they're in and fitted, you can see with the system that we're running, they actually don't look too bad and they fit in there kind of nicely. This is obviously, as I've said, the 280 millimeter model. So if any of you are wondering how I've got it in the uh, Master Case 5, yes, I have had to customize it. But uh, I did that just because I felt that the, the black um, and the silver with the EVGA, especially with the graphics card as well, actually did kind of fit in well with the theme. So we've uh, the only thing that I would say is out of the top, you get the connection, there's a cable at the top, and I'm not gonna show you everything because let's face it, it's not the first time that you've probably seen this review, but there's a cable that comes out of the top and you get two fan uh, cables, female cables that come out the top that you can uh, plug your fans into from the top up here and then you also get a, a cable that goes in and connects to the motherboard for power. You can plug that into a Molex should you wish. The only other thing that you need to kind of keep uh, an eye on is the fact that the uh, USB connection is in the, in the bottom. So I would take time to route it round and up over the top. Don't be messy and go off the side or round your graphics card. Take a little bit of time, it will take you two minutes to get it done properly. So with all that in there, um, the fitting, it fits all the Intel sockets, although on the box at the moment it doesn't support the uh, AM4 socket, but where it is an Acetec based unit, you can get an Acetec based AM4 bracket from, um, I think EVGA by the time I've made this video should have them, uh, but you just may need to go and get it after you've made the purchase. Um, but you can use one of the brackets from any of the other Acetec uh, coolers, so th that could be one of the NZX T, um, the new ones, so the uh, 42, 52, 62, uh, any of the Acetec based Corsair ones, the, 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 the back plate is, uh, or the mount, is all interchangeable. So you don't particularly need to worry and it's not like they're in short supply or anything now. So that's it in there. I think it looks kind of cool. I think it looks kind of nice. I like the chunky but rounded uh, uh, design to it. And the large EVGA logo, let's face it, if you've gone as far as to get yourself an EVGA graphics card and you're looking for an AIO, it's really not a bad shout. And it uh, obviously it does match really well. Okay then, so like I said, we didn't test it on this system. We tested it on our normal system and we're actually testing on KB Lake and we're still doing Skylake as well. So uh, one thing I will say is if you wanna go and look for the other results because we have tested the cooler on um, a 7700K at five gigahertz and 4.8 gigahertz. But the graph that I wanted to show you now is I wanna talk a little bit more about this graph. So, uh, and it feeds into my conclusion as well. So it is an enormous graph. There is a lot in here. 
You can obviously pause, look at the bits and bobs, or if you want to pick it apart in more detail, like I said, go to the OC3D website. So we've got this here, and you can see the high, medium, and low. Now, in the software, there isn't actually a way that you can just go and click high, medium, or low. So the best way I can put it is we got the fan slider, and low was at the bottom, high was at the top, and medium was in the middle. So pretty simple, absolutely a uh, really easy way for you to kind of get your head around it. Uh, now this graph, although it is fairly extensive, you can see that we're in the top third at the top with this. Now the uh, in high mode, it didn't particularly, uh, it didn't top it, but it's in the top three, it did really well. At the end of the day, a 280 millimeter cooler, it'd have to be pretty bad if it didn't do quite well and get up there. Now with this, it's, because uh, I haven't mentioned, it's 6700K at 4.7 gigahertz, 1.35 volts. I know that doesn't sound like a lot nowadays, but this was actually the most that that chip could do, and it was kind of average for the 6700Ks back then. This actually does put out a fair bit of heat as well. But anyway, so with those clocks, we did go through the um, the, the low and the medium and the high. We had the pump um, uh, on, uh, we tested it both at maximum and minimum didn't make any difference. Just to kind of give you an idea there as well that you don't necessarily need to overthink your pump speeds too much. If you're running an incredibly, incredibly hot CPU, uh, and by that I mean maybe one of the older 2011 sockets or something like that, that is gonna be absolutely dumping heat, you may then find that a slightly quicker fluid, temp uh, fluid flow will help you slightly better. But um, what I normally do with the AIO pumps, if I was to use it myself as in a, in a, in a longer kind of platform, I normally end up tuning them so, because sometimes the lowest setting isn't the quietest. I normally end up tuning them so that they're quietest and you find that nice equilibrium where the, the, the noise goes away and I normally leave it there. Anyway, the point in this graph is, and the reason why we're still showing you at the top, is that something quite surprising happened. The drop from medium fans to low fans didn't make a great deal of difference. It was 0.25 of a degree. So it was literally like next to nothing. But when it's running on really those low fans, it's almost silent. And um, it, 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 to the point where sometimes with our test rig, our test rig, the other parts in the rig are louder than anything else. So the best way that I can uh, put it for you is uh, it, it did incredibly, incredibly well. And I was expecting a much bigger drop. Now, when I bring up the noise graph, Basically with this noise graph, the best thing that I can tell you is that you can only compare it to our results because there, there can be such a big difference between just changing the sound meter, it's unbelievable. And we also test these at absolute you know, knockout noise because, uh, so 12 volts basically, we turn the fans up to max. The reason why we do this and the reason why we give you a worst case scenario is in all honesty, with um, systems like this where you can turn the fans up and down independently, it can be a bit of a, uh, a, a, bit of a pain because you could end up with loads of different options. And I know there are people out there now that are saying, well, why don't you test them on low? Well, some uh, AIOs and stuff like that actually rely on the motherboard header, so you never know what the lowest is. So we've just gone for a worst case scenario and it does help us put in there, but what that does end up doing is it just, it tells us a bit about if you were running an absolute performance. People were asking for therm for noise results, but the problem is with the noise results, as I've been trying to explain, it does mean that I have to do all this waffle in between explaining why we've not done this and we have done that and why you can't compare our results to their results because it does look like 60 decibels is a lot, but it, it's just it's just the way it pans out with the way we test our kit. Um, so, you know, use that graph to compare itself to other coolers. Normally, with it sitting about midships at 100 RPM, I would say that's fairly good because some of the, uh, the coolers out there, they can be absolutely crazy. And then the other ones, the only reason why they're above it is because, in all honesty, the fans don't spin that, um, that uh, fast. So there's, you know, there's a lot to be taken and you can pick it apart and decide which way is best for you. The, mo the most important thing that I have said to you though is, let's face it, I have said to you when it's on low, it is incredibly, incredibly low. And the drop from medium to low, the performance drop off for that really wasn't that bad either. Now, 
Going into the conclusion, we ended up giving it the silence award based on that low performance, because we think that the low performance actually did really well. Uh, if you go and have a look on the OC3D website, at low, you wouldn't be able to call a 7700K at five gigahertz. I don't particularly see that as being a horrendous problem though, because what I genuinely see this as being um, good for is used for someone that doesn't want to um, put loads of volts through their CPU. It's definitely for someone that's manually volting because if you're running auto volts or you've not touched them, that just means your motherboard's putting more volts in than you actually need. You can undervolt your CPU and leave it at stock and it will drop your temps right down. Anyway, the reason, the point I'm kind of saying about all of that is if you have done that or you're looking to build a silent system and you're expecting to undervolt and do all those things, this on low is brilliant. The performance that it put out on such low fan speeds with such low noise as well was a definite thumbs up from us. Um, with it all turned up to the hill, it, it was never going to top our graphs and it never did. So the, to be honest with you, it was down in kind of like, especially with the five gigahertz stuff, it was it was on par, it was average. So, uh, but I genuinely think that that is probably down to the fans. But I also think that the fans are the reason why it can be so quiet. So you're always going to get that trade-off. You can't have absolute lead and edge performance without making any noise unless you put it in a fridge or a freezer. But if you were to do that, you've still got a pump running somewhere. So you get the kind of angle that I'm trying to go with. So I think it's a solid OC3D silence award because it is probably one of one of the quietest coolers we've seen that's put out really good performance or you know responded well to such low RPMs in a long time. Software is easy to use. It looks nice. The, the fact that it doesn't come with AM4 out of the box with the current market being so um, you know, hyped up and people loving Ryzen uh, could be seen as a bad thing, but I've also explained that you can get hold of them uh, really easily as well. Um, if you can't get them direct from NZXT, eBay and Amazon have them now and they're like five pounds. And this is the other thing that we'll get to as well, is this is something I don't normally get involved in and I genuinely, it's not something I normally do, but I know that EVGA has dropped the price on these and the other models uh, by 50 pounds at the moment. So this cooler actually comes in at 89.99, down from 129.99. Now I think that's gonna run till the end of the month, so you could pick yourself up quite a bargain with this. And I'd say that if you were kind of teetering and um, uh, you've already got an uh, EVGA graphics card or you're not that fussed maybe about everything matching, then it's a really, really good cooler for the money. You just need to remember this one specifically is a 280 millimeter model, so you need to make sure that you can get them into your case. I technically shouldn't have been able to have got it into this one though, and you'd be amazed what I can do with a drill and a couple of bits of metal to make some brackets up uh, uh, when I've got a spare hour and I've had too many cups of coffee. So there's all those things for you to kind of uh, weigh up and everything as well. But like I said, for 90 pound, I would be grabbing one before they uh, go out of stock. Adding a little cut in, EVGA have decided to give away a 280 millimeter version and a 120 millimeter version of this cooler. So I'm gonna add a link underneath. So if you'd like to go to enter one of those, you certainly can do. Uh, we're gonna be hosting the entry page on the OC3D website. Um, just so that I get a bit of traffic, you know how it is. But anyway, so if you'd like to, you like the cooler, you like all that stuff, you like what I've said, then yeah. Thanks to EVJ, we've given you a chance to win one of two. Epic.